Okay, so the time has finally come to talk about Bridgerton season three. There's so much to talk about. I have a ton of videos already in the works leading up to season three, and so I plan to have a really full slate of a lot of Bridgerton videos, so if you are interested in that, definitely subscribe, let me know. But with the little tiny clips and like pictures that they've been releasing, I was like, I just need, I just need to start. I just need to start making <sighs> making content and i i mean i'm gonna be psychotic like it's psychotic like you haven't seen probably if you can believe it today i think i'm just gonna go through the pictures that have been released and the little clips and teasers and whatnot that have been released because today this morning actually i was there at the valentine's day event sneak preview of Bridgerton. I also did film my like exact reaction to it while it was happening. I'm even rereading the book right now because it's been a couple years since I read it and I want to make a whole video like analyzing like the differences, the prediction. I have so much to say <laughs> about Bridgerton. <laughs> So just get ready for that, I guess. Today's a little looser. I just kind of want to start the conversation. I'll start by looking at some of the promotional stills that they've released. I will definitely do it a more in-depth video, like <laughs> analyzing, like, because I did this, I did this for season two, and my friends will attest to this. Like, I literally FaceTimed them and was like, so I think because this costume is here and see we can see from the architecture here that that's Lady Danbury's house and I think this will be first episode because like I I mean I was mapping it out so I will do that in more depth later but for now let's just go through what we already have and I will do an in-depth video that discusses the book both generally and then more like spoiler territory I won't do that here but I I will reference it. So officially we have the poster, of course. I l like this poster. I find it interesting. There's def- well, I don't know that this should be the video for that, but there's definitely- I mean, it's clear that Shonda and the showrunners have always had an affinity for Penelope and Colin in particular, but Penelope in particular. So this is, it's funny to me that this is the poster. Colin's nowhere in sight. Uh, they probably will release a poster with the two of them, but but this works. I mean, it's Penelope and it's also Lady Whistledown. The mirror is, of course, an infamous reference to the book, if you know, you know. So they released a bunch of stills today. The first one is Penelope with a suitor. This is apparently a suitor of Penelope's who is very keen on her. They talked about that in the panel today. And period. Love to see it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have so many things that I started thinking about, like what I would do to adapt this book. And Penelope having suitors or a suitor is, I think, a good way to go. I think that is a smart thing to do. I feel like it goes without saying the transformation definitely is happening. We've seen a couple pictures from like the beginning of the season where she's still in kind of her yellows and like less flattering hairstyles. But as the season goes on, we see, you know, a quote unquote glow up, which is really just things that complement her more, you know, things that are playing to her features more, which I also want to say I think is a really good way to do it rather than having it be this whole storyline of like, oh, she loses 20 pounds and, you know, 10 years later, like that's kind of the vibe in the book. So I think it's smart to do it where it's like, okay, well now she's wearing more flattering dresses and colors that complement her. And, you know, her hair is done in a way that is not crazy, like her mother wanted. <laughs> I just read this passage the other day. Actually, I won't give any details, but this is a picture of Colin and Penelope kneeling on the floor. Colin has something wrapped around his hand and Penelope's holding it on him. Let's just say in the book there is an infamous scene in which Colin gets a cut on his hand and Penelope helps him. So we are going to see at least some version of that. I found there's like a lot of things where they throw very slight reference to things that happen in the book. The scene isn't at all the same, but they like, they, they give a tiny bit. They're like, enough so that book readers are like, oh, 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 oh look. <laughs> so, so that seems to be one of these moments. I think this might also be the same outfits that they had in that little clip that they released, where he was like teaching her how to get suitors. We have Will's family, which I think is very interesting, and I, I'm happy about that. I'm happy that Will 
has been a fixture of this. I'm happy that he's continued. I think it's great to add that, even though they're not like characters from the book. I think they, I'm really interested to see where they go with that and how and where it connects to Colin or and or Penelope or their story. Okay, here we have uh, all of them going to what seems to be a ball. Eloise at the front looking very forlorn. Francesca is obviously in the back. Violet, Colin, and Benedict in the very back. I mean, I live. Very interested to know what they're going to do with Penelope and Eloise. Because they there's a lot of ways they could go with it, the way that they set it up. And I definitely have opinions about like what I would do, which I will talk about in a separate video. But... I'm just intrigued. We have Francesca and Violet talking. There's a lot of Francesca that they've released, actually, which makes sense to me because of the recasting. It's like you want to start to get people familiar with her. And this timeline-wise, I think, will be a big season for her because she will be coming out, I'm pretty sure. And her debutante season is important to set up now for her season later, whenever they do do it. It's important for it to start now, and I think it definitely will be a focus. Okay, okay, Ruffles. Like, Colin, what, what is happening? What is happening? You go to Greece once. I don't- Benedict- mm. I'm sorry, Benedict is so fine! They could never make me hate you. They could never make me hate Benedict. They could never make me not notice Benedict. I'm so, so sorry to this man, to Colin. Period. He's serving. It's a serve. We love to see it. Love this for you. Is it keeping me from looking at Benedict? No, absolutely not. Not for a single second. Could never. Could never. Oh, I can't wait for his season. Oh my god. I was... I don't know. I feel like maybe I should do a, a video about the lore of like my feelings about this stuff, but I was not happy when season three was announced to be Colin and Penelope. I actually did predict it to one of my friends before season two had even come out. I said they might do Colin and Penelope season three. Like I was just like, mm, they've introduced the characters. How long are they going to do slow burn? In a lot of ways, it makes sense for it to be Colin and Penelope, but it's frustrating in a lot of other ways. But it also depends on the execution. So it's kind of a to be continued on that. Um, but that's them at Will's Club for sure. At the very finale of season two, Colin and Will had those interactions. And I have been wondering if that's going to continue, and obviously it looks like it will. That set, in general, was built, so it makes sense that they would be taking advantage of it no matter what. <laughs> Next we have the Featheringtons. Oh my god. Um, okay, okay, Prudence in a, in a suitor. Okay. Okay, actually, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of live for Prudence's hair. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, but, like, actually kind of not. And like actually kind of her whole outfit, I mean, is better than it's been. Which is, you know, something. Penelope off to the side. It's rough. It is rough. That should be toward the beginning of the season. Perry Queen Charlotte, love you forever. I'm obsessed with you. Nothing you've ever done is wrong. You never said or done anything in your life wrong. Okay? And I love Lady Danbury's hair. Whew. Oh my god. Goodness. I feel like we actually don't see Lady Dammer in blue a lot, so period. So getting into promotional pictures that were released a while ago, this is Colin and Penelope at the little market that they've been to each season. This is giving end of season to me. I can't remember exactly what episode it was, but this is giving end of season. Then again, I did think, but how could I have known? Wait for the season two video. Wait for the season two video, you guys. I, oof, for season two. In the trailer with Antony and Kate in the orange dress at the Featherington Ball, I was like, oh, period, they're already married and this is their ball that they're hosting. Like, I, w I was so sure and I just couldn't have been more wrong. But I was like, this is the end of the season, obviously. So they have to be married by then, right? Um, anyway, then Colin looks good here, period. Absolutely. Okay, we have Penelope Stunnen. She looks so good. Her hair looks so good. She's at the Featherington house, I presume, looking out the window. I'm sure she's either thinking about Colin, Eloise, or Lady Whistledown. If I had to, if I had to place a bet, I'm sure she's pondering one of those three topics, if not all three. Uh oh hottest couple alive. Hottest couple alive. Have you ever seen any people more attractive? I don't know what the context of this is, and I don't care. Thank you for giving it to me. 
I needed it. Truly. And absolutely, Lord and Lady Bridgerton, period. The Viscount and Viscountess, period. Absolutely. Oh my god. Oh my god, the little messed up my hair. That is good. That is some good shit right there. That is really good. Okay, all the Bridgerton- Oh my god, Gregory looks so old. All of their expressions are very different. It's really funny. Okay, like, vest of fish? Animals? There- oh, I see a bee! There's a butterfly! They're sick for putting bees on these boys' clothes. Sick! Okay, he's holding a whistle-down copy. Hadn't noticed that before. Of course, he's in the Bridgerton house. His hair is a little too puffy for my liking, but we'll let it slide. The puffy sleeves, however, I do like. Also, slut? S uh, button your shirt up. You're, you're too slutty. You're too slutty. <laughs> this is definitely Colin, like, just arriving back from, I'm sure, Greece or some foreign land. Right as Francesca is about to make her debut, I am pretty positive of that. <laughs> yeah, the picture of Eloise and Penelope in Madame Delacroix's store. Obviously a confrontation of some sorts. This is probably toward the beginning of the season as well. I was gonna start making a timeline and kind of pinpointing where everything was, but there's still so much more content to be added on top of it, like once they release the trailer. But I might start making the bones of it because I just can't help it. I just can't help it. I can't. I can't. It's like a disease. I remember when season two was coming out, I could not focus on anything else to save my life. I spent all day every day analyzing the costumes and the locations and the timeline and trying to figure out and trying to predict like I, I I could think of nothing else quite literally and I feel the urge coming on again. They released that like tiny little clip of Colin and Penelope and I was already like looking up everything and I was like already going so I think I might just do it because I can't really help it. But yeah, those are just kind of opinions on what we've seen so far generally. Okay, then let's watch the little clippy clips. The one that they released this morning and the one that they released like a week ago and just give like a play-by-play, -play, I guess. Obviously I've seen these before, but I want to cover them because they're, they're the things that make me go, oh. Your eyes. Okay, I'm pausing already, but the music is very interesting. Just want to put that out there. Penelope, stand up. Stand up, Penelope! I'm really of a torn mind with this, though, because half of me is like, stand up! And then half of me is like, no, but it's her. Rereading the book has helped me with that. Also, like, that's that's one of the kind of cornerstones of it. She's obsessed with him. She always has been. She always will be. I definitely think there's a way for them to do both, because, like, delicious. Like, absolutely make him grovel. Grovel! He needs to be on his knees, Penelope! But... At the same time, I'm like, but, she, I mean, but, mm. and is it realistic that, like, Penelope would just, like, lose feelings, even if she does decide that she really wants to find a husband and she's sure that it's not Colin now? Would it really actually make sense for her to lose feelings so quickly? No. So it makes sense that even if they're doing this in a pretend setting, her real feelings are going to be slipping out. Her, her, <laughs> her simp status is going to be coming through. Let's keep going with this. A most remarkable shade of blue. And yet somehow they shine even brighter when you are kind. I, don't, I might say something like that if you were a suitor. Mm. Well, that was uh, rather direct. <laughs> oh, Nicola and Luke are good. They're, they're good. They've always been good together. I have always said that. Everyone in this show understands the assignment as far as embodying the characters, but the dynamic between Penelope and Colin, I find is very similar. Like the season one conversation that they had where she was saying that like the baby was the footman's and he was like, what a barb. Like that, when I read the books after that and they had so many interactions, exactly like, I mean, it was just exactly like that I was like oh okay period they understand the assignment they know what they're doing I, I do like seeing him be flustered in it we've definitely seen Penelope be flustered but seeing him be flustered we, we love to see it priceless priceless I mean come on it's definitely giving like I'll help you find a suitor 
I'll be a teacher. Okay. Period. Classic. Classic trope. I think it's a smart choice. I think it's a smart choice. Again, I have a lot of like ideas and predictions, but also things that I would have done. And this is a good route to take for sure. The like instructor and then he's like, oh no, I'm supposed to be instructing her, but I'm falling in love with her, all that stuff. Give it to me. Thank you. And then someone's coming in at the end of that. Penelope looks scared, which makes me think it's Eloise. Interesting that it's at the Bridgerton house. I am very interested to see what they're gonna do with Colin, Penelope, and Eloise, because it's like, if Colin and Penelope are spending all this time together and Eloise just is seeing it, like Penelope's always at the Bridgerton house, even though her and Eloise are at odds and, you know, she knows her secret. Like, is she gonna wanna reveal that? Is she gonna threaten to? So many possibilities. It's very interesting. Again, a lot of ideas about that, which I will get to in other videos. Yeah, they, they both, the comedic timing, period. Okay, okay, sound design also, the gulps, period. <laughs> the gulps, the stutters, pleasing to my ears. Like I, I the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> is it's bringing me right there I'm, I knew when I saw this I was like I, I am being transported I know exactly what this is and it was okay let's now watch the other clip that was released today which I do have a video of me reacting to live of season three. First two minutes is that that's the reaction that I want period yeah 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 uh, but before we play it, please let's thank our amazing cast. I, I would rather a trailer. So much to season three. Good night, Mr. Richardson. Do you not need a chaperone? Spinsters do not need chaperones. You are not a spinster. I'm in my third year on the marriage mark with no prospects to show for it. What would you call that? Something wrong. Pardon. Between us, I mean. I wrote to you this summer, as I always do. Why, who did not respond? Admittedly, very few did, but Period. if you are going to make me say it out loud, I miss you. You miss me? Oh, I mean, period. You miss me, but you would never caught me, is that correct? Pen, I... I overheard you at my mama's ball last season, telling everyone how you would never, ever caught Penelope Featherington. Period. Tell them. Perhaps we should talk about this somewhere more private. Because I embarrass you. Of course you would never caught me. I am the laughing stock of the town, even when I changed my entire wardrobe. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. Period. It's what I like to see. <laughs> it's what I like to see. I don't know that those two minutes, and I also don't know. That wasn't the first two minutes of the season three premiere. That was maybe in the middle or at the end of the season three premiere. But we'd love to see it. We love that confrontation. Exactly. I wish there was more. It's still a while though. Part one on May 16th. Yeah, I mean, Fuck, th my next three months are gonna be so consumed with this shit. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but I'm gonna watch it again and... Okay, so first off, they did say- they said- So I'm not even sure if this is accurate, I guess, because they said that they would show the first two minutes of season three. This was not two minutes, and it also surely is not the first two minutes of the premiere of season three. If- it is in the premiere of season three. It's definitely in the middle or at the end. This confrontation. That would not, they would not open the season with that confrontation. Um, and obviously there's a ball already going on that we would be seeing in context that we're missing from this. So just want to say that Penelope's hair being already good is interesting. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to ponder that. Uh, again, I will do more analysis on their costumes later, but let's just start it over again. Good night, Mr. Bridgerton. Do you not need a chaperone? Spinsters do not need chaperones. <laughs> you are not a spinster. Okay, why did it kind of make me feel something? <laughs> 
I want to say also like I like Claude and Penelope. Um, they're certainly not like my favorite couple or my favorite characters individually. Like Colin is not the Bridgerton brother that I'm sipping for, but like, I still like them. I'm still like, period. Like you can see I'm still living. I'm just such a sucker. I'm such a historical romance sucker. It is so, Im no, it's not embarrassing. Actually, I wear it with pride. Um, but I just, I, I'm like, he's like, you're not a spinster. Like, <laughs> why did you chuckle like that, sir? Like, why do you say it like that? What are you implying? What's laced in the undertones there? Like, what are you, what are you saying? And yeah, the discourse, the back and forth, this is also a very book thing about Penelope being a spinster. Of course, in the book, it's a little different because there's that time jump. But yeah, Penelope being resigned to being a spinster, resigned to the life of a spinster, all that type of stuff. And Colin well-meaningly being like, no, no. Although actually the way that Luke delivered that line just then, there's 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 a little tinge of something under it that was not in the books, which I I like. Uh so yeah, that kind of back and forth. <clears throat> okay. So I love how I'm literally stopping at every 0.25 seconds and then go on a tirade. <laughs> like this is my mind. This is all the thoughts. I just it, it so many people would be like, you can't possibly be getting that much from such a short clip. No, I can. I can and I am. Okay. I am in my third year on the okay. marriage mark with no prospects to show for it. What would you call that? Something wrong. Pen. Between us, I mean. Pen being angry is really something we have not seen. I don't, we've seen Pen like snap kind of, but well, I guess we did see her angry in the fight with Eloise, but I don't know, th this kind of anger, and Nicola's doing a really good job conveying that with her eyes, like she is spiteful, she is scornful, she is sick and tired, she is fed up! I wrote to you this summer, okay. as I always do, and well, you did not respond. Admittedly, very few did, but if you are going to make me say it out loud, I miss you. Call it. Um, yeah, the writing is definitely a thing from the books. They started it last season, which was very smart, and carried it through here. Period. She didn't respond to his letters. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Pen. It's so funny because honestly, Colin, I feel like so many people take it to such an extreme. They're like, Colin treats her like shit. Colin takes her for granted and doesn't recognize her value a lot of time, but Colin doesn't generally treat her badly at all. He actually has a lot of fondness and tenderness and care for her. They're friends. He he likes her. So I people kind of act like Colin just treats her like absolute shit and, you know, all that stuff. And yet that was not a good thing to say, especially, and I think they made it even worse in the show because in context of the book, there's stuff that leads up to him saying that, and he says it to Benedict and Antony in like the privacy of their own home, actually. Whereas this is at her mom's ball, at her house. He's saying to a bunch of dicks, like friends of his, and it's like a big party. He's saying it loud, it's at the party. Like it's just, it, it was very disrespectful, very hurtful. I'm not trying to excuse anything that he said, but it's also not the worst thing ever. I want to kind of like make that clear, but period. I, I, I wouldn't have talked to him either. Well, would I have been strong enough? Maybe. Uh, I would have been resolved to not talk to him and until he came back crawling, begging on his knees for my forgiveness. And then maybe I would consider giving it. <laughs> Which is kind of this energy. Although I do have a feeling this won't last too terribly long. I feel like it might come back up in the midst of their training sessions where she has this kind of like resentment or anger or bitterness or frustration like she's fed up with some of the co comments that Colin makes without thinking or you know the dynamics in society but I do think that she's gonna soften pretty quickly. I hope they have him do enough grumbling. They better. But he's he's very, you know, it's a curious like looking around like you didn't answer my letters. <laughs> oh. 
and you deserve it. Even though you're a sweet boy and you don't actually, but for the purposes of this, we just need you to go through this. Okay, Colin? I'm sorry. You just need to go through this. You just need to be put through the ringer a little. It'll all be okay. You miss me. <laughs> I have to laugh. Woo! That is a scornful laugh. That is a laugh of just absolute mirth. Like, I, I and I love it. Again, new side to Penelope. I love seeing her be this fed up. But him saying I miss you, you know, I think that shouldn't be taken for granted. I feel like that's not the type of thing that men especially, well, ever, but especially in this time in the society, verbalize or really articulate well at all. So the fact that he's straight up doing it and kind of like putting his ego or his pride or even convention aside a little bit to say that to her, I think is very meaningful. And I do think he missed her. And I think that's part of what is going to help the realization that he does have those feelings for her. Because he's like, my life kind of sucked when Penelope wasn't talking to me. Hmm. Uh, everything kind of sucked and I kind of wanted to, I, to end it all. Like, I uh, wonder why that is. Uh, and I don't think there's something intrinsically or inherently wrong with him saying he misses her in a friendly way. Because I don't even feel like it's, it's not the same thing that he did in season two where he was like, you're, you're Penn. You're my friend. You're not a girl. Like, that type of thing. It doesn't have that same undertone and disregard and, like, thoughtlessness. It, 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 he's just making a statement. He's like, I missed you for real, for real. And she is not hearing it. And that's kind of a yikes, but I kind of live. You missed me, but you had never caught me. Is that correct? Penn, I... I have heard you. At my mama's ball last season, telling everyone how you would never ever call Penelope Featherington. Perhaps we should talk about this somewhere more private. Because I embarrass you. Yet another point of contention. That kind of thing is brought up a lot in the books and has brought been brought up a little bit in the series, and I hope they're gonna expand on that, the like embarrassment or like, you know. The why, why he said that in the first place, because he didn't, I mean, I don't think he was even thinking about it or even meaning it. It was just kind of like the type of thing that you say, because they are kind of on different levels, like status wise, I guess. So the societal pressure and influence can't be ignored in that at all. And this it's happening right here, right now. And I don't know that he even in that moment was it was the embarrassment, but I think it's a valid thing for her to point out and be like, Okay. Like, you want, okay. You want to go somewhere else to talk about this? Like, you know, be for fucking real. But he also, he, Mance is dumbfounded. He has nothing to say. He's a, she said that and he was like, mm. the man was too stunned to speak. Just how I like it. Of course you never caught me. I am the laughing stock of the town even when I changed my entire wardrobe. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. Side note, that is Lady Danbury's house. So that is probably her ball. And I'm guessing it is probably, she has the first ball of the season every season. So that is probably the first ball of the season. So this probably is episode one, but just like mid episode one. Um, or toward the end of episode one. Yeah, love the confrontation. Period. I'm glad that she's not keeping it in. I'm glad that she's saying it. I'm glad that she's putting him through it. He needs to earn back his trust and respect and adoration and all of that. Like he needs to, he needs to, he needs to make up for this. This is, it was not good. Um, it's not irreparable, but it wasn't good. So yeah, I like that she's saying it. I like that she's not like, kind of being like a doormat, I guess you could say, or or just kind of shoving her feelings down and like letting that happen and not confronting it and not saying anything to him and kind of like letting it slide. But I also love his desperation, his confusion and desperation. <laughs> oh, I hope there's like a whole host of things in the first episode before this moment 
where like he's trying to do something and she's like absolutely not and he's like what's happened what have i done like he's like so confused and so distraught about it i just would love to see that i would just love to see it and she's like not giving him an inch i almost even would wouldn't mind like a prolonged version of that like even do it a whole episode don't let them have the confrontation until episode two. I mean, that doesn't seem like it'll be the case, but I need the groveling. I need the confusion in desperation. And then I need the shock and panic that he's like, why am I so upset that Penelope isn't talking to me? Hmm, what could that mean? Like, I, you dumb boy. I need, hello, like, is anyone home? I need that vibe. I have so much more to say, it's not even funny, but I just wanted to kind of give first thoughts, first opinions. Both those clips kind of gagged me. More so than I was expecting. More so than I was expecting. And I was not fond of the decision when it was first announced. Like I was like, ooh, they're not like ready to be romantic leads. But I can see a world in which they address all of that in the season and it is actually a good arc and it is actually smart to be determined, like I'll have opinions after the season airs, obviously, and I see it in its entirety. But I, I kind of have a good feeling about it, at least for this season in particular. I can't speak for other seasons. Again, season two video will be coming. Uh, but I do, I, I, I think they're gonna pull it off. I think they're gonna pull it off. And yeah, I was a little bit more gagged than I was expecting to be. Although again, I am a sucker. Like I just, I am. <laughs> Crawling, fighting, miscommunication, yearning, angst, the roles being reversed. <sighs> Teacher? Teacher-student dynamic? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, sure. <gasps> oh, there's so, it's so, there's so much, there's so much potential, there's so many possibilities. I will make many more videos talking about that. Stay tuned. Like, I'm telling you, if, if you like Bridgerton at all, if you're, honestly, even if you're not excited for season three, maybe I could get you excited for season three. Because I'm just, there, I just have so much to say and do. Okay? So many thoughts, so many predictions, so many connections, so many analyses, so many theories. Like, I just, if you're not subscribed and you are interested at all in Bridgerton, you should subscribe because I will be making more of these. And once the trailer comes out and, you know, teaser, like, I will be all over that. It will be the only thing that I can even fathom thinking about. So might as well make some videos on it. Okay, bye!